I'm working on a series of poems based on YouTube videos of, um, of jazz musicians of the bebop era uh, as part of a project. So this is the first time I'm going to be reading these particular ones out loud. So this is based on a YouTube video of Max Roach, Max Roach and Abby Linking performing Tears for Johannesburg and Triptych Prayer Protest, 1964. Black woman there and gone like a ghost, no words. If you need words to say tears, you're not crying. Don't say the word crying if you want to learn pain. Bald like the sun died, bald like a shaved head, sackcloth eyes, tea tears bleeding down your collarbone. Crying is also a bouncing forward if you have no choice but to work, run, running on an empty tank. Something like a cross is in the background of the Belgium stage, but strung out like a gutted piano, and then we hear the piano itself, dignified and swung, short solo, minor chaotic clusters that land on a warm major spread. The bass line ends, loops at the low end of the scale, and jumps back Sisyphus again, Crisp black funeral suits on everyone but Lincoln. Where has she gone? Empty mic where a black woman sung afro like a halo, no words but the tom come crashing. How effortless and precise the rage. Muscles smooth like sand dunes are under Roach's face. I went to Johannesburg 55 years after this recording. I've never seen a city more under siege, this dude from the hood. I've never seen a flow of citizens so scared to walk the streets at any time. Electrified fences around yoga studios now, white Africans telling me they're colorblind. Flying into Johannesburg, the township roofs are made of jutting slabs of corrugated steel. In the sun, the glint of those shanty rows cuts your eyes, slits it clean, extension cords snake through center block holes down streets with no names just as quick Chow Township disappears under landing gear. The capstan says, welcome home. The hi-hat lands steady on the whole notes, but Roach scatters a chaotic roll on the hinge where the top half is loose. Sax player's face frowns a tight fart. Snare rim pops a baseball bat right on the edge, near the skin, screeches a preacher's noise, not a bead of sweat, fade out and onto Lincoln's face, screaming for the last piece, screaming out a final wordless prayer. And one more. So um, it started off, so the, the, the project is called Bird Diz and Erased History of Bebop. And it started off with just looking at interviews of, of Dizzy Gillespie and, uh, and Charlie Parker and seeing how they, as kind of like, kind of like images of, of, of black male, black masculinity during that time intersect. But I ended up kind of like looking at interviews of lots of different people. So I was looking for like the earliest YouTube recording of Sarah Vaughan. And the earliest one I could find was of Playboy's, um, Playboy used to have like a variety show that they did in the late 1950s. Um, and, and they would, you know, be, be like dressed in suits 
and Hugh Hefner's girlfriends were just like meandering, you know, and um, and he would have you know like the the biggest like musicians and thinkers of the day because that was porn back then. So uh, this is a poem after a YouTube video of Playboy Penthouse, November 28, 1958, Sarah Vaughan and Pete Seeger. Before the woman known as the Divine One speaks, Martin Ingalls, a doughy-cheeked man who'd been in three movies before marrying a wealthier star, stood between Hugh Hefner's girlfriends. They say little and are wrapped in silk sheets. Marty's caught in a story about he never has enough cash to pay the toll booth and how laughable it is that they always let him through. Hugh Hefner, standing politely nearby in an identical suit, turns towards the camera like a friend-in-law walked in. We are three minutes and 31 seconds into the video featuring the earliest recording of Sarah Vaughan I can find when I blank back from my phone, dazed and splayed out on my couch to find Marty is still talking, now on an imaginary phone having a conversation with a Chicago bridge putting a lien on his house. The women make small sounds that are close to laughter. It pains Hugh to say, politely as always, that Sarah Vaughan is here, black, black for a long time, then fuzz, smoke that Vaughan takes a drag from once and then waves away her cigarette in the cloud of Hugh Hefner's long-stemmed pipe. I can count six famous men Vaughn and Hugh discuss in her short interview before introducing the band. It's her band now, but we don't need to say much about their names. The song Vaughn is known for introducing Bop to the voice was called Lover Man, co-written by Gillespie and Parker. In that song, Vaughn's voice is so sad her vows become oblong boats that bounce cyclically against a sea made entirely of moonshine. No one to love me, lover man. Oh, where can you be? The song she sings for the Playboy Mansion is similar, misty, how she's as helpless as a kitten in a tree. A sleight of hand man who appears after says, well, look, she's the best. That girl hits me right in the middle, right inside the jangling purse I have written, hidden inside of my breast. Thank you. <laughs>